allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Consider approval of revised job description for coordinator, school to work. Is there any second? Second. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Same sign. Okay, motion passed. Um, is there any public comment or correspondence? Looks like at this point we would recognize the Garden City High School bowling team for taking. The last few weeks of February and the, the first week of March were pretty great times to be uh, to be a Buffalo. Uh, we crowned two team state championships and four individual state champions, two in wrestling, one in uh, bowling, and one in powerlifting. So uh, tonight, at the previous meeting, you recognized the state championship wrestling team. Tonight is, is bowling, and to do that, I would like to introduce uh, not only our league uh, WAC coach of the year for bowling, but also the 6A state coach of the year for bowling, uh, Mr. Kip Nichols. As Steve referenced to, it was an amazing season at Garden City High School bowling. Um, this group of young men have been together uh, a couple of years now. That uh, they all returned from last year's uh, fourth place finishing team at the state tournament. And we, Coach B and I, knew that we had a special group of guys this year. Um, started the season off uh, going to the All Kansas Invitational Tournament in Wichita. That's a Baker Systems tournament, for, and people who don't know a lot about bowling probably don't understand Baker System. But uh, there were 26 teams from across the state. Um, we ended up winning that tournament uh, as the first open tournament of the year. Um, come back and bowled a strong conference season. Uh, middle of the season, we went to the largest high school bowling tournament in the state of Kansas, the Great Plains uh, High School Invitational. Um, we come out of the pool play, uh, ranked second, and ended up uh, bowling for the championship and winning the championship of that tournament also. Um, we got to face the uh, returning 6A champion from last year on their home floor uh, up in Junction City late in the season and were able to uh, win that, uh, that uh, quad with them. And so we went into the regional event feeling pretty good about where we were at. We took second at regionals uh, to a very, very talented Wichita Northwest team and uh, knew when we went to the state tournament uh, the next week that we had to bring the best game we could, we could uh, muster up and uh, we had a nice talk on the way to the tournament that morning, the boys and I, and I just told them I wanted two things out of them. I wanted them to compete, every one of them, and I wanted to beat Wichita Northwest. They, they were our nemesis all season long. Um, we had a strong first game, a better second game, and but went into the third game of the tournament in uh, third place still. Uh, the boys found a way to rally, uh, averaged almost 250 as a team in the last game and shot a uh, state tournament record score of 2868, uh, winning the state tournament by 12 pins. So in, in that process, Tristan gave us all a little, um, a little exhibition of just what potential he's always had, uh, throwing a 299 game in the last game of the state tournament. I'm not gonna lie, clipboard number six died when that last pin stood. <laughs> That's what I do, I break clipboards. So, uh, In the trophy case, next time you're at high school, you'll see the remainder of the clipboard and the, broken, the torn score sheet, along with the state championship trophy and the, uh, 
the, the poster that uh, uh, goes along with that. Uh, let me introduce the guys. Uh, senior Mickey Bridges, uh, four-year letterman for the high school team. He was on our 2013 um, third-place team also and, and 2015 fourth-place team. Uh, Chris Henderson, he's a sophomore. He was with us last year on the fourth-place team. Uh, Tristan Funk, individual 6A state champion, um, also has won uh, many individual titles across the state over his four years. Uh, Mickey and Tristan have both just recently signed with Kansas Wesleyan University Bowl at the collegiate level next year. And then Carl Larson, Jr., he also was a recipient of a broken clipboard at Great Bend this year when he <laughs> shot 299. So, and then uh, Coach Bethany Nichols, my assistant coach, uh, she's been with me eight seasons now. Uh, this was the 10th year of Garden City High School Bowl. Now, so um, we feel like we've come a long ways in those 10 years, and we compete with all the big boys now and show them uh, once in a while that we don't just drive tractors out here in Western New York. <laughs> so uh, thank you for your consideration this evening, and we'll get out of your hair and let you do your business. nowadays. It's kind of like a newfound thing. And KJ, I want you to know I watched Nebraska Bowl. Nebraska women were on television yesterday. I didn't watch for long. I didn't watch. <laughs> um, and I have a question for anyone who wants to answer this. Um, obviously, there's a physical and mechanical component to your game, but how much of it is in your head? Like, do you psych? Can you get psyched out? And, it's like you know, overthink things. Yeah. Right? It's like ninety percent mental. Really? So, like a lot of sports. Yeah. So you just have your steel, all four of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a girls' team? We do have a girls' program also. Uh, uh, we are we're kind of in the rebuilding process, but I'm very excited about where we're headed. We had a fabulous class of freshmen come out this year. Um, and we've got uh, one returning junior next year who I think will provide a little bit of leadership and stability for those girls. And we've got some, some great kids that are coming up through the, uh, out of the middle schools that I think we're going to have a good girls program over the next three or four years uh, to look forward to. Um, the girls were actually the first ones to ever uh, place at a state tournament for uh, Garden City High School. In 2011, the girls team took third place. Um, and in 2012, we had both boys and girls teams at state tournament. Um, and then 2013, the boys took third place. So we've got three state tournament trophies in our in our possession, and we hope for a lot more over the years. I, I told uh, Mr. Stoppel that he needed to find me a bigger trophy case because we got awesome. lots of hardware to be putting in it. <laughs> well, thanks for representing um, Garden City High School the way you have, and um, thanks for bring bowling up in the front of the line. So, way to go, guys. Thank you for your support.
there's no correspondence, so um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam President, I move that we approve the consent agenda as, as amended. Is there a second? A second? All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Same sign. We'll move on to the curriculum reports. Uh, tonight, um, we have some remarks from um, uh, Lana Duvall, uh, uh, Director of Kinney County Econo uh, Economic Development, and Nicole Lucas, Program Chair from Economic Development. They are both members of the Finney County Workforce Connection, and Nicole is also a member of the Youth Development Committee. And that is the committee that helps support and develop building bridges. We've had two, uh, two different years, two rounds of that, and they have some comments to make. They sent you a presentation. I hope you've got it in the board packet. Um, but we don't have a, we can't seem to pull it up, so they're going to make their comments now. So, Lana? Thanks, Deb. We just really wanted to come and thank you um, as a school district for the involvement that the high school has had, and specifically Deb Jarmer. She's just been amazing to help us work with the youth and, and the Workforce Connection is tasked with recruiting folks into our community to take jobs that we have, helping to prepare the folks that are already in our community to take those jobs. Uh, and we feel like a very important part of that is our youth. We wanna make sure that our youth understand there are great opportunities that exist here in Finney County. So whether they want to go for a technical education and stay here and work, or if they wanna go away to college and come back, we just want them to understand that this can be their home forever and they can they can build a great life in Finney County. So as we said, we really wanted to thank Deb for her involvement in that. We had some great opportunities. The first Building Bridges event tied the business community in to the education system. A lot of those business people had never been in the new high school. So it was really exciting for them to get to see that and especially to get to understand the academies better. Uh, we had several businesses that volunteered to go in and talk to specific academies throughout the year just to provide some, some insight into what it takes to do those jobs within the community. So we feel like we're making some great progress. The second one, we were actually able to bring students into the mix as well. And one of our board members, Bob Kreitzer, who is also a co-owner of Tetra Plumbing, spoke to the students and just gave them some, I think, some inspiration from on high, I guess is the best way to say that. Um, just really talk to them about what it takes to be a good citizen and to be a good employee for somebody. So we're excited about the opportunity to have the school district so involved in that workforce connection. I think that's a really key component. And again, we want to make sure that we thank Deb for everything she did. Nicole, if you want to give her the certificate we prepared for her. Oh, that's nice. Oh, thank you. Any questions if anybody has any about the workforce connection? I don't have a question, but I, I'd like to make a quick comment. Um, I'd like to thank <coughs> Lana and Nicole for uh, coming tonight. This was something they approached the district uh, they wanted to do. Um, we appreciate your work to help make this happen. Our relationship with the business community is vitally important to us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you look around Garden City and you see the progressive nature of our community, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to make that happen and for us to have the type of community that we have. And it's things just like that of taking time out of, out of your schedules to come and, and address the board. Um, we had planned to share some information about building bridges with the board sometime this spring, but what a gift to have the business community approach us about wanting to share that and I think that really tells us how valuable from from the community's perspective this event and this concept is so thank you for, for your leadership and, and coming and of course uh, you know we're going to miss Deb tremendously and, we are too <laughs> and, and on a side note too uh, Deb noticed this presentation happened in like five minutes <laughs> I just sat down <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
dip on the spot a little, a little more. Uh, our presentation today is really about uh, academies and career tech ed and what we're doing at the high school. And uh, talk to Deb, this may be her last board meeting. Uh, but uh, we will find someone to sit in that office, but we're not going to find anybody to replace Deb to do all the things that, that Deb does for us and with us. Well, my vision for the, my first year as the head principal at Garden City High School was uh, centered around three things, service, academic achievement, and innovation. Uh, the service projects and monetary donations completed this year way too numerous to mention and a great source of pride and they've been going on all year and, and uh, we're really glad for all of, uh, of what, a, what our kids and staff have been able to do but tonight our focus uh, with the presentation that my associates have put together for you uh, centers around academic progress in particular career and tech ed activities and uh, some of the ways that we're using the iPads to do some of uh, those activities uh, and how the iPad is utilized throughout our building. Our, our main focus with the iPad and our main initiative this year has been in the conversion from the old iPad 2s to the Air uh, iPad through the uh, starting with the freshmen and some of our staff and that will continue for several for several years. Uh, the other big adjustment for the iPads with us all this year is the that we're starting to use them for our state assessments, which has been a great addition. Uh, it has allowed us flexibility in our scheduling. It's helped ease our need for different proctors throughout the building, which, which helps with our, our use of staff in, in doing our state assessments. So that's really been a big thing for us this year with the iPads, is getting the capability to, to really be using them for our state assessment. And that, that's a piece that had been missing in the first couple of years of of doing the iPads, and, and it's neat to see uh, see us getting the really the, the full functionality for them in that area of the state assessments. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to my associates. I think we start uh, your tour of the high school in the freshman academy with uh, Carrie and Tara. All right. Well, this is our freshman academy. Um, we're really excited focus this semester has been on career exploration. During our freshman success time we have a curriculum that uh, we use with kids and this semester it's really career focused. So um, we're using a program called Career Cruising and so students are able to research careers, they're able to do a, a, an assessment that's called Matchmaker and so they're able to match up their interests with other careers and kind of have an idea of careers they would be interested in. Um, we also have interest in learning style inventories that are a part of that career cruising program. There's a resume builder and then there's the individual plans of study that we're able to create with, career, with the career cruising and so that'll go on as they go through their years here at the high school. And then another activity that we've done this semester is Reality U and I have Mr. Ayers here from Communities and Schools to share a little bit more about Reality U. Reality U is a program that is uh, sponsored by communities in schools of mid-America. We host it at schools throughout our, our five-state network. Um, students take a survey about two weeks before the event, and they are, in the survey, they are asked questions about what they would like their uh, what they would like their financial life to be like when they're 26 years old. We take those surveys, we create a profile for each student. Uh, the profile will include such items as their, their career, their marital status, the number of children that they have, their credit score, their monthly and annual salary, and so on. And uh, so it gives students an idea of what their life might look like 10 years in the future. Um, Students then go around to various stations. We have 14 different stations uh, that we set up in the, the Student Resource Center there in the Freshman Academy. And uh, they, they have their, their monthly salary and they have to figure out how they're going to budget that money. So they can uh, purchase housing, vehicles, insurance, uh, and a variety of other needs to, to figure out how to wisely manage their money. And um, the I, what I think is the best part and the, the greatest strength of this program 
or the, the volunteers that we get from the community to come help us out with this. Just change the slide. Um, we brought in somewhere, give or take, around 50 different volunteers that, that helped us out over the two days that we held this event last week. Um, they worked tirelessly to, uh, to work with the entire freshman class and, and guide them through this program. They gave financial advice, helped kind of coach students when they thought maybe they weren't making wise decisions. And so they are a, a tremendous asset when we put this program on. Students tell me all the time that this program is an eye-opener for them, that they have no idea you know, what, what their real life is going to be like when they're an adult. They have no idea what their parents go through. Um, and that this program helps open their eyes to those facts. So um, I am very pleased to have helped put on this program for the second year, and uh, we look forward to uh, we look forward to next year when we're going to be adding some extra components to the program uh, to, to help students process what they gain at the, you know throughout the reality U program even more. Thank you. The career exploration really helps us with figuring out what direction the students are go, going to go. So whether it's going to be training health, arts and comm, or public service. And on that note, we'll go to where our students go after Freshman Academy. They get to make an, a choice based on their career path or their professional uh, interests. And so the, one of the academies that they have a choice to go to is the Public Service Academy. And I think every time I come up here, I just say, it's an honor, it's been an honor, and it continues to be an honor to work with the people in public service, our teachers, our staff, our students. Um, they do a great job in the areas of education, law, government, business, and finance. And we also house our ESL community, our foreign language teachers, uh, newcomers, and special education in this academy. So it's a wide variety of people in the public service academy. Uh, one of the areas we focus on is early childhood and education. We have connections with the community, as was mentioned earlier for the CTE and the presentation, that we have a lot of uh, people from the community coming in to relate to our kids in these areas. And our kids go outside of the school and have connections with other either businesses or schools in our district and work on becoming either a teacher or a provider for early childhood care. Um, we have an elementary and early childhood opportunity in a wide variety of our programs throughout USD 457. We have students that go to all of the elementary, intermediate, as well as middle schools and get an opportunity to see what it's like to be a teacher, to work with other students and work with kids. 
Um, so they have activities that they generate. They create lesson plans. Uh, they go out to the schools and get a real first-hand experience with students. Uh, and at the same time, they're learning from our teachers about being a teacher. Additionally, we have the Grow Your Own program and the college and uni university programs to try to get those kids that are interested in teaching to come back uh, to Garden City. So um, each year we have uh, students that um, qualify to go into those programs. Right now we have two seniors in the Grow Your Own program that will be going into uh, the Emporia State program, four alum, uh, two at Fort Hayes State, and two at Newman. And we're give, beginning that program um, even further with the Kansas State University uh, connection as well. Uh, there's quite a few uh, teaching tr uh, training completers, which means they've fulfilled the criteria uh, in coursework so that they can go on to those programs as well. Uh, in CSI, crime scene investigation, law and governance, we've also had quite a few uh, com community connections, had people visit and had people work with our students in the academy. Uh, we've had John Dahl, Judge Quint, uh, Mr. Coxell and Susan Richmeyer come in to give the kids real world experience and communicate what it's like to be in those professions or those occupational pathways. In our business and finance connections, uh, we've had uh, Mr. Kreitzer from Tatro Plumbing, uh, Mr. Huber from uh, Garden City Wind River, Sean Collins from Western Motor, and Aaron Anderson from Crop Product Services come and discuss things with. Uh, Mr. Algram's class um, in both advertising, marketing, accounting, and general business to kind of give them a better idea of their pathway towards business and, and those uh, finance connections in the area. And then I did want to make sure that we recognized our ESL. Um, we have over 900 students. They've all had to um, take part in an ELPA testing, which is a new testing protocol. Uh, special thanks to Mrs. Steele, who's our coordinator of that program. Have, has almost completed all of the ESL testing at Garden City High School. Um, other systems that are involved in the ESL program, a T3000, Read 180, and System 44, those are all being utilized in the classrooms. Uh, and we use the iPad, we use all our technology to incorporate helping these kids do better on things like the ELPA test, as well as state, um, state testing that we're in the process of now. And then we also, I didn't want to leave anybody out, because sometimes we come up and we present our um, academies, but we leave out a lot of our core curriculum teachers. Uh, but one thing about our academies that's done very well is our teachers um, not only have their core curriculum material, but they adjust their teaching to the interests of the students. That's the whole point of the academy. We get them into a classroom, English, math, science, social studies, and even though we have anchor pieces and core curriculum that's consistent throughout the academies, our teachers go and try to gear that towards the interest of their students, whether it's public service or any of the academies in the school. So I just wanted to make sure that they recognize um, our foreign language uh, teachers as well as the rest of our um, public service faculty because they do a great job. And one of the things they do is try to coordinate um, cross-curricular projects in the entire academy. This year we've been really focused on uh, food production, agriculture, and get every teacher and every um, classroom in the academy to mention or create a unit or tie in this lesson somehow, including the culture of foreign language and what happens with food in other countries and production and those sort of things. So they've done a great job of coordinating a wide variety of activities for the students in the public service academy. All right, arts and communications. And that, uh, if you can read that is debate, forensics, Q, uh, broadcasting, culinary, FCCLA, music, and art. And I'm going to go ahead and start with my music department. Uh, first of all, we are very successful, and um, we have a uh, very successful season with our Kansas Regional and Solo Ensemble competition. We had nine soloists, which received a one or superior rating, uh, which is the highest score that you can receive. And those go on to the state solo competition upcoming this weekend. So. Uh, we're very, very pleased with that. And you can go on, sir. Uh, choir, uh, basically we had 11 soloists receiving a number one rating. And what we have pictured here are what Ms. Vanderhoff would call the um, best singers in the state. And they're among the be best singers in the state because they go on to be in an all-state choir. So this is a great shot in Wichita of that group. 
and um, so I'm just very proud of the success of my academy in that sense. The Kansas, uh, the Western Kansas Orchestra, WKO at Western Kansas Orchestra Festival. This is the competition gym turned into a huge concert hall. Those are uh, the bases laying across half the basketball court. And uh, what it is is basically about 600 kids that come from the region, and they play all day long, and they put together this concert led by these amazing conductors from uh, local universities, and it's spectacular. It, it really was a great thing. We had seven number one ratings on our solos for the regional competition, and uh, you can go on to Basically, uh, next is forensics. We had, uh, Mr. Russ Tidwell has featured over the tw past 22 years, full, uh, full teams for the past 22 years, uh, qualifying for state debate and for the past 25 years for state forensics. Uh, the most impressive thing was I got a text, I think it was Saturday, saying, you're gonna need to change that slide. We have 11 students that qualified for the Salt Lake City National uh, Competition, uh, which will happen this summer, I believe. So I'm very happy to uh, uh, brag on Mr. Tidwell regarding that. Um, another thing I wanted to kind of back up and say that as far as career focus, we have uh, a total of 18 students that are going on to music majors in either K-State, uh, Fort Hayes, or Pittsburgh State University. So that's really neat to see that we're, we're getting out there, and, and that's for music education. So hopefully we will have 18 people from Garden City maybe come back or, or move on to a career in music education. Um, the uh, Hilt sisters traveled to Greece last summer. So I love saying this, that just, I, I, you know, Barb just smiles big when I say that you have a world-class theater. And so the neat thing about this was besides their success at the uh, National Conference for uh, the Thespians, um, they fused a, you know, Greek theater, which is usually very dour and kind of low, they fused it with hip-hop music. So it was, just, it was just wonderful to see that, you know, you're standing there and you're going, oh, what's gonna happen now? It's kind of a sparse set. And this amazing music begins, and then the actors just kind of fused onto the stage with this amazing lighting all done by the kids. It just, it was, I was just uh, really, really impressed with that. Uh, culinary, and Dr. Hopkins, there's a kid there on the left. I don't know, anyway, looked kind of familiar. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to say that the culinary teams continue to excel. We've had uh, the culinary teams associated with FCCLA. We've had uh, three national championships there. Um, now, I want to also draw attention to the ladies on the left. Not the best picture, kind of elongated, but uh, Taylor Tyndall and Itzel Ariola won $20,000 apiece uh, in scholarships. That's apiece each one of them. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I know you guys are smart and everything, but I'm just really impressed with that. Uh, especially Itzel on the right is a sophomore. So just thought I'd drive that one home. That, that really, I like that. That really made me happy. So that's Karen Burton's program. Uh, Buffalo Broadcasting System with Chewy Bernal. Uh, basically a, a record uh, 51 awards. And uh, I want you to notice the iPad being used by the kids as a camera. They're very posed there. And they're, they're laughing because I said, I, wanna, I want you to use the iPad as a camera like Mr. Singh. We do that all the time. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I mean, I'm old, so you know, I'm easily impressed by things like that. <laughs> all right. And finally, our uh, art department with Lisa Neely, Julie Nelson, and Josh Greenberg. Uh, these are our local art winners. And that's the local competition that takes place downtown. And uh, those, those students are featured there. Moreover, uh, our state competition, the next slide, please. We have Cameron Wallace, who was selected as Garden City High School Merit winner at, in Liberal, Kansas, at the Baker Gallery. And this is also a neat thing, that Lexis Brungart was a national medalist in the digital art category. So she was chosen as one of 2,400 winners out of 320 different entries. So mathematically speaking, and also, who knows, talent-wise, we have an artist from Garden City High School who is in the top 1% in the entire country for digital art. So that's uh, pretty, pretty happy times there. And also, I just want you to come over to the high school on the 26th between 5 and 7, and we'll have all these featured. We're going to have uh, performances in the auditorium. It's going to come and go. We'll have the hors d'oeuvres like we do, uh, fashion show, the art. Everything will be there. And so that's our academy, and um, that's what I have.
Okay, um, School of Trade and Health Sciences. Um, I brought some of our experts. Uh, they're going to speak uh, real briefly on, on some of the things going on in the pathways. Um, but as as a first year principal, it really is kind of mind blowing the amount of uh, things going on, um, not only in our academy but uh, throughout the whole school. Um, what's really interesting to me is the fact that we have uh, people knocking on our doors every day, wanting to come in and work with our students, and it's not necessarily, <clears throat> you know, a case where we have to go out and seek that out all the time. We have we have uh, community members and people from other communities wanting to come in and work with our students because they know um, that the end result is a, is a more skilled workforce that in turn uh, serves them. So these are our uh, awesome uh, faculty and staff members. Um, go to the next slide. Okay, we're here. Um, I have Mr. James Schneider. She's going to talk about uh, some of the, the things CTE related in, in the health science pathway. Um, Mr. Diller uh, will go next, and he's going to talk about some of the 3D printing that we have going on in our academy, a really cool innovation. And then last will be Dr. Buddy Smithson. He's going to talk about some of the things going on in the power mechanics and in that pathway. So, Jane, go ahead. I'm Jane Schneider, and I am the lead teacher at the Health Science Academy. And the list of our um, classes that we have up there, um, the first one is Health Science, Health Career Investigations. And that's what our sophomores used to step into when they come in, um, if they're interested in a health career. Um, we give them a variety of experiences in that. We try to um, kind of show them, we tie the body systems in, and then try to show them with each body system what careers are um, available for them if they're really interested in that specific system. Um, this is the one that we just finished. We just finished with the muscular system. Um, we take our kids through a program called Anatomy and Clay, and um, we have each student has a half of um, mannequin, and then we lay the, um, the muscles on it so they learn where the origins and insertions are. Um, they also learn um, from the striations on them. And um, this is Maddie Doy, or Madison Doy's, um, and she did a wonderful job of it. it is, it's beautiful. Um, she worked really, really hard on it, and uh, she did a great job. Um, the second set of classes that we do, um, sports medicine, a lot of our kids take it either as a junior or a senior. And then CNA classes, they can do it when they do, um, are they, and it ties in with the college, so they get dual credit for it. Um, the health science rotations class is a class where they job shadow. Um, they have to finish the health career investigations class before they can do the job shadow when we're in this health science rotations class. Um, we're just finishing those up. We have about a month left in our classes. And it's just hard to believe that we've gone so fast. Um, do you guys have any questions about the Health Science Academy that I might be able to answer? Yes. About how many various um, positions are there around town that they get to shadow? Um, the dentists are really, really good with us because, of course, there are so many of them. Um, the um, the hospital is really works really well with us um, also, and we have several. Um, Doctors, especially if they're, it's, it happens to be their personal doctor that ties them in, a lot of times they'll let them come in and watch. We have, we have a couple of students that have gotten to see surgery this year, um, which, yeah, which for them, they are just awestruck when they come back and, and full of information, so it's wonderful to watch them. I had a student this morning that had come back from Fry Eye, and she got to see, um, uh, I'm trying to remember which one, I think they restructured a, a, an eyelid, um, and she happened to see her. She also worked as employee there, and so um, she has been wonderful at it. Just I, it just opened so many doors for her, um, and now she's trying to figure out whether she wants to stay here um, and go to the community college and continue working at Fry Eye, or whether she wants to go on to KU. And it's it's a big decision for her, and she realizes kind of what's at stake. And I keep telling her that whichever path she chooses, she's still going to be it's going to be fine. Um, but she really is thinking about staying here so she can continue the job and continue getting so much experience from them too. And it's wonderful for our students that they get to make that many decisions and they have that kind of frustration with that decision that they have so many options for them. So it's wonderful. Anybody else? 